Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation webinar series. We're happy to have you joining us today. If you can hear me and you are in the chat, this is Brenda Anderson. I'd like you to go ahead and type in there and let us know that you can hear us okay and that you are um, having a great day. I know it's a little rainy out. We had some traffic and all kinds of here in our area. I am sitting here with Kareth Vance, our Programs and Operations Director, and Melinda Rhodes, our Programs and Operations Manager, and they work very closely with all of our programs. They are um, instrumental in making sure that what we do to serve people with vision and hearing needs happens. They work with all the sight and hearing chairs and all the individual clubs. They do a lot of visitations and a lot of work with our clients. So welcome, um, Kareth and Melinda. Say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we are here today to talk about our Hear the Roar, our hearing programs. Our hearing programs don't get nearly as much focus as our vision programs do. There seems to be a lot of effort from the state of Oregon and from other organizations to work with vision screenings and make sure that vision is a top priority for especially children. Um, but it seems that our hearing programs don't access or, or reach as many people. Um, it, it tends to be a little more complicated as to what type of coverage people have. Have. But if you, Kareth, because you've worked so closely through your experience with Lions and with the programs of the foundation, um, could you give a little bit of history about Lions efforts with hearing and what we do to help people? So our hearing program that most of you are familiar with is our refurbished um, hearing aid bank. The broadcast is, is now starting. Um, all attendees are in listen only mode. And we're going to start calling all of our hearing programs the ROAR program. Um, so you'll notice that change coming in um, over the course of the convention season and then starting in July. Um, but traditionally what we've had is a, a program where the Lions Clubs partner with the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation to provide used hearing aids um, for individuals. So all those hearing aids that are collected around the state by Lions Clubs and through other efforts are all collected up here at the office and then they go to RJS Acoustics in Vancouver, Washington. And um, Ron, who owns that business up there, he takes those and his staff take those and they go through them and figure out what the um, the better ones are, the ones that are still working that would be good for someone else to be able to use. And then Lions Clubs will identify people who are low income and need hearing assistance and they'll partner with their local audiologist to go ahead and um, have them, they're pointing at pictures and throwing off. Oh. So they'll go ahead and uh, the local Lions Clubs will arrange for these individuals to fill out an application form, um, which Melinda right now is the person here at our office who reviews the form just to make sure that everything got um, filled out and then she sends that um, and to check where we are budget wise as far as our portion that we'll pay for. And then she sends it back to the clubs and they'll connect the individual with an audiologist for a hearing test. And then the audiologist works with that RJS Acoustics in Vancouver to actually find a refurbished aid or aids that will work for that person. We'll get them all ready to go and then they'll ship them out to the audiologist, the provider that the club is working with and then the audiologist will fit the client and then what they do is they invoice the club for that hearing test and the fitting services and then RJS Acoustics will send us an invoice here at the foundation office for the actual refurbished aid for the uh, warranty which is a six month warranty and then for any shipping costs of them getting it um, down to the audiologist. So that's the traditional way that we've all worked together and there's locations all over the state that the clubs partner with um, and it's a great way to get hearing aids that are affordable out to individuals. And so a lot of the aids that we use, those parts um, and the components of it, those come through our collections, eyeglass collections, and the different drop-off locations throughout the state that Lions do, and they bring them into the office. And we work with a lot of volunteers who come in and sort and clean those, um, turn them over to RJS, and, and we're able to, they take the components of those and make those refurbished aids. That's actually one of my favorite parts um, of the program is that it's a full circle, where you have the Lions all over the state collecting the hearing aids, and then having them sent to RJS Acoustics, and then having them in turn given to an Oregonian in need. I think it's a really beautiful circle. It's, it's really wonderful to see that. 
And um, we do collect about how many would you say on an annual basis? Oh my gosh, on an annual basis. It seems like every time we do a count, um, a volunteer goes through and counts them, there's like anywhere from 500 to 1,000. So if you figure they're, we're probably collecting four to 6,000 a year, depending on kind of the year and, and how they get here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know that RJS only uses the most recent versions of AIDS. Anything that's an older version, they do go ahead and, you know, take those down. They don't use older components that can't be programmed or put together for it. And they have the ability to make a variety of AIDS to help with the different kinds of hearing loss. And I know that Ron, when I've gone up and met with him before, he finds he finds the work that they do and their partnership with us because they partner with lots of lions organizations, not just the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation. They also partner with uh, other states and other groups um, in order to provide refurbished and used aids. Well, and the other really great thing, um, one of the things when sight and hearing chairs have our list of low cost, no cost um, resources for individuals. And one of the neat things about the Vancouver Hearing Aid Center and RJS Acoustics is that for individuals that for whatever reason don't qualify for our program, um, for the Lions, maybe they're just a tad over financially or their residency doesn't miss or something else is going on. Or maybe it's just someone that, you know, a Lions Club member or some, a family member that needs a hearing aid but can't go through our program. The neat thing about Vancouver Hearing Aid Center is that they do a lot of great work with individuals. So a lion can just call up and say, hey, my dad needs a hearing aid or, um, hey, you know, Joe, we, we aren't able to help Joe here at our office. So we're, um, you know, love to refer him to you. And um, Brenda, I believe your dad even went He through. did, yes. My dad actually came in and it wasn't a situation where he needed um, assistance, but he had been getting examinations and he was being told that he needed two aids and that, you know, he was considering the cost of that and that's expensive. And he and I were talking about it. And I said, well, you know, when you come out and visit, I'd love for you to go and meet Ron. And I know he'll give you an honest opinion about what your situation is with your hearing loss and he can help advise you if nothing else. And so he went out and he met with Ron. He got the examination and they determined that it was actually just one aid that was necessary. He had sufficient hearing in the other ear and he's been very pleased with the aid that he purchased from Ron. And um, it was a it, it's been really useful for him to have it. And he felt more comfortable about his experience in going there. So he had great feedback for us. And we've had a lot of different lions who have gone up and met with them because they are a great resource for the community, not just through our programs. Um, we've worked with them, I think it's going on 20 plus years. Um, it's been a great long-term relationship. We're really thrilled to have them. The only concerns that we have in this particular area is that we don't have a dedicated funder for our hearing aid program. And when we don't have funds that are dedicated to that, it's all the general donations that help to make this particular program happen. So when we collect the aids, that's wonderful for us to be able to do that. But there's a cost for um, some of the fitting and the refurbishing itself. And then, of course, clubs have the cost with the um, examination and setting that up. But in this particular case, we don't have a dedicated funder for the program and we do work with the general donations for it. Um, this is one of those that it's really important that sight and hearing chairs turn in their applications so that we can check to make sure that we have the funding available for us to go ahead and process and do the refurbished aids. It also puts us in the position that there are some years where it may be more difficult towards the end of the year, depending on how our fundraising and our efforts have gone, um, where we might have to slow down or even you know, hold off on some of the services in order to make sure that the funding is available. I wanted to also let the sight and hearing chairs know and everybody listening um, that when I'm reviewing the applications, just it might be helpful for you to know what I, what I really look for. Um, I'm looking to see that the individual has um, put their date of birth on the application. I want to see how long they've lived in Oregon. There is a two-year uh, residency um, uh, requirement for somebody to go through the program. I look to see how many people are in their household because that in connection with uh, their total income is going to let me know whether or not they qualify financially and, um, and looking towards the Lions to really make sure they're verifying that proof of income. Um, and then on the second page, I want to make sure that there's a Lions Club listed and as well as it's nice to see that there's an audiologist listed as well. And then the treasurer listed because as Kareth explained, that's kind of how that second page is going to go back and forth between the foundation, the Lions Club site and hearing chair, the Lions Club site um, treasurer, 
and then RJS Acoustics and the audiologist office. So it's really important that that page is completely filled out. And I think it's one of those programs that more than more than some of the others, we're, we're kind of all in this together as the different groups, the Lions Club, the foundation and the audiologists and the client. What we're all trying to do is, is get that you know, access to hearing. I, when we talk about the different senses and the impact of it, you know, um, people who talk about the hearing and that, that sense of community, that language, that connection with family. So it's such an important thing for us to do. So the refurbished um, Hearing Aid Bank, we are very proud of that program and working with that. As I mentioned, um, you know, it's just one component of what we're doing with hearing programs. The next thing that we're excited to share is more about our mobile project and we do have a setup here for our pilot project for hearing services and I'm going to let Kara explain a little bit more about what we're doing. So um, one of the things that with the refurbished stage that we had wanted to test out was we had been contacted by Dr. Todd Landsberg with the South Coast Hearing Center from Coos Bay and he has a mobile RV that he has outfitted to do hearing testing and hearing fittings and um, to do software things with the aids and, and those. And he travels around and he did a lot of services for veterans and some other things. And in conversations with Doug and others of us here in the office, um, he was talking about, you know, how could his mobile hearing service benefit Lions Clubs throughout the state? And one of the things that we immediately jumped on was that that would be fantastic because there's areas in the state where maybe there's not an audiologist or there's one audiologist and it's just not enough to um, fulfill all those needs for ind individuals. So one of the things that we did in 2015 was we did two um, pilot, we did a pilot project with the Roar Mobile Program. And um, there was an event in Eugene and then one in Canyonville in last uh, in spring of 2015 and during that time 20 um, participants received um, hearing tests and refurbished refurbished aids um, through that service and what we did was we we went ahead and ordered from RJS a set of those refurbished aids just kind of generic versions of them because of course at that point we didn't have any tests or anything from, from the participants and we got those to Dr. Landsberg and he took them with his RV to a location. And then as the people came in and had their hearing tests, then he would use those aids that um, he had choices from to work with those individuals and see what we could do to fit them. And it was um, it was a really uh, great way too for the clubs in those areas. We were able, because it's one doctor one day, and it's a set of individuals coming in and using his um, mobile RV, we were able to do it at a much reduced cost for most of the clubs. So they were able to pay $50 per participant instead of whatever their normal hearing test and fitting fee is, which can be three, $400 or more, depending on what part of the state they're in. And so that reduced the cost for them. And then um, Dr. Landsberg is just amazing. And he, he for the most part, is donating his time. Um, we help him out with mileage because, the, obviously, with fuel costs and everything for him to get his RV around. But this is just one of many ways that he gives back to the community is through this partnership. So that was our pilot project. We wanted to see how that went and how follow-up care would work. Um, he goes, he would go back out, and he's just recently met with a couple of the participants from those events to do some rechecks and and see things weren't quite working or there were some issues with that. And I know when uh, we were first getting to know Dr. Landsberg, I think it was last spring, we went out and visited his mobile vehicle. And I had not seen a mobile hearing vehicle before or, or been on board like that. And it has the big sound booth in there. And I mean, an entire full setup of, of diagnostic equipment for him to use. It's a, it's a very neat neat um, setup that he has and he's very kind he goes out he's got a lot of focus on serving with veterans and people who have hearing loss that he can and he's yeah. got other um, I think it's Dr. Craig Ford and mm -hmm. he's got some others that work with him and then the clubs that participate were great about sending out volunteers so our idea when we did this war mobile um, pilot project was well this will be a great opportunity for us to use these refurbished aids and go to different locations around the state and then if Brenda can hit the button for the next well I will definitely and then we went down oh yes the Eugene event that we had and the other one didn't we just recently have an event that's okay 
I'm good. And so the next thing that we wanted to talk to you about is what came out of all of that and some other things that we were doing is um, we found out um, actually through our KX Kids Partnership um, and some other things we actually um, and some other we were working with Pacific University on some things and they mentioned to us that the Lions in Washington have a partnership with Starkey. And Starkey is a Starkey Foundation. It's a national foundation, and they work with the Lions Clubs in Washington to offer new aids at basically a wholesale cost. And so we called them up um, and spoke with Heather there and said, hey, is there any way that we can get those brand new aids from Starkey as well and start using them in our program? And so we've done a, a partnership agreement with them where we're able to purchase a set. Um, it's 20 at a time. Um, they're brand new aids. They're $125 a piece. So if we purchase a set of 20, it's $2,500 initial um, outlay. And those are all, um, it's one basic kind of aid. They're all behind the ear um, aids. They're Aries, Aries Pro series. Um, and that the the thing on the right side of your screen kind of, it's basically their material that they send out when they want to tell someone what it is that they're, they're selling. So it, it's all these different um, specifications of the of those yeah. particular aids um, and so Starkey it's actually really neat because they send us um, the aids they come with cases um, they send us um, all kinds of little supplies it was kind of fun the first box we got because we've never like here we don't typically see all the things that come with and so there's all these little yeah. things in there I don't even know how to tell you exactly what Some those domes, are domes and here clears and and other other little gadgets to go with them so it wouldn't and surprise of, me if you guys made up names for what the pieces yeah. are not knowing. And then there was no. And it comes with like brochures and information about it. And the really cool thing about the, well, besides the fact that they're brand new, um, the other really thing that I was really excited about is that they come with a one-year warranty instead of six months because they are new. And it covers if they're lost, broken, or stolen, which is huge for our, our Lions um, individuals because what we found with um, our community members is that Sometimes it's a broken or it's not working right problem, but a lot of times, unfortunately, what happens is we've literally had like their dog ate it. And I mean, like where the dog really, it's obvious by the aid, <laughs> their dog chewed it up and ate it. Um, and then everything. we've had people that they lose them or they're homeless or they're in um, transient type situations where maybe they're going from home to home or they're having to move or they're in a care home and things get lost and they get stolen and our, the warranty just wasn't covering those and now it does so with the brand new Starkey aids that gets lost that gets stolen um, the individuals are going to be able to replace that and at the end of the one year when the warranty that comes with our purchase the foundation's purchase of those is running out the individuals can actually extend that warranty I think it's up to a year or, an, or two years they can extend that warranty out so that they're covered for an even longer period of time so it's a really exciting opportunity for us um, and so what that's that the best really indicator. worked out yeah. with. Kareth turning to me and she's looking at me and she's giving me the best indicator. She's like, turn the slide, turn the slide. <laughs> Here you go. Turn the slide, Brenda. You can just say it. Go ahead. So the cool th the I was going to say it, but yeah, sure. So the, the cool thing um, and one of the feedback that Melinda got from Dr. Landsberg is, um, well, you want to share the feedback he gave about the trying to use the RJS aids on the mobile van? Yeah, I think it was more difficult in a situation where you're doing um, an event in a day because you 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 really can't be using refurbished hearing aids as well for that particular event because uh, there's all these variables that that may occur. So he did he did let us know that it was difficult to do that with the refurbished hearing aids um, because some of the people who came to those first two events had pretty profound hearing loss um, and other um, conditions that were. Um, slightly rare, he said. He was. He felt. Uh, he felt like it was kind of funny that he encountered so many people who had very specific um, conditions that are pretty rare, like the hardening of the middle ear and oh different, different other um, uh, situations that can be um, that are just sort of rare. And so, because of that, I think he was really excited at the thought of having just a streamlined, brand new software and, and aid to use for individuals. 
And so um, we did another sort of pilot project. Um, we went back to um, two different communities on the 9th or the 5th of, yeah. well, last weekend um, he took uh, the brand, he took a set of brand new aids out to Roseburg mm -hmm. and saw 12 people that day, I believe. Yeah. With which and clubs was he working with? Um, a multitude of clubs in the Roseburg area. It was mostly the Sutherland Lions Club. Um, there was also uh, Roseburg, um, somebody from um, Myrtle Creek. Myrtle Creek. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So what we did was when we found, um, we had gotten multiple feedback from clubs that that would be a good area to go to, and it was one of the areas that was easy for him to get to as well. And so we reached out to all the clubs in that area, anyone that was within like a half hour to 45 minute kind of yes. and offered up this opportunity to all the clubs and then just based on who who had individuals and and wanted to participate they they turned those in and the weekend before he saw 10 individuals in the eugene area um, which is really helpful for eugene because they're um, the large audiologist that was um, uh, provider that was serving that area is closed and so they no longer have access to that and so we were able to offer up to the multitude of clubs in the Eugene area um, and surrounding environment there as well to test this um, uh, event and so he went out and he took the brand new aids with him on the mobile RV um, uh, both times I believe he was parked at an inn or a like a fairly central location to yes. the community. We reached out to the clubs and between him and the clubs figured out a good spot to have it. So it's great. So the people come in, they have appointments ahead of time. Um, they actually brought a copay with them, um, which they... Um, what about that? What What's the copay? You know, the copay was something that was suggested. Um, we've actually had that suggested by clubs from time to time. And Dr. Landsberg had actually said that um, he that it's it's a way of really getting the individual to um, take more ownership and and buy into the mm -hmm. thing and it also gives them that sense of you know I contributed to this this mm -hmm. is really mine and and I'm I'm helping with that and um, and and honestly it also helps offset some of those costs absolutely of, of the time and yes. the effort and he boy there's a lot of supplies that go into it and just a lot of equipment and maintenance for that RV so it's mm -hmm. you know it's a little bit but it's it's it, it means a lot and every so, little bit helps so people came out and then the clubs paid their their fifty dollars per person um, for him to be there and then it was great and Melinda you've talked to him since then yeah so there were a little bit of hiccups um, I know that Eugene um, Unfortunately, I think with the heavy rains, there was a little bit some leaks with the RV, so he ended up uh, doing it at uh, the, the Valley River Inn. Um, oh, yeah, okay. And then he also unfortunately ran into another little obstacle with the software for the AIDS, but uh, thankfully that was a really easy fix, so now he's been able to get the software for the AIDS, so he was able to use that the next weekend in Roseburg. Um, so he's going to plan to come back out to Eugene uh, the beginning of January and revisit all of those clients and fit them with their aids. Um, but uh, all in all, he said everybody was really thankful, uh, very grateful. He said a couple of people cried uh, when he was in Roseburg. Uh, I mean, just really uh, had a really uh, great experience with, with the events. And he said the aids worked really well in Roseburg when he was able to fit the software with them. Um, so all in all, just really, really great success. And um, just as you guys mentioned, there was the copay, and I don't know if we ever said the amount. It's a $25 copay for the client um, to pay. They'll actually pay that directly to South Coast Hearing. And then the $50 for the club is paid to the foundation. And then we cover the cost of the, the mileage and, and the mileage and the aids themselves for that setup. So, okay. And so um, one of the big things that we wanted to do today was actually share with you how our pilot project went with this mobile event and share with you how you can bring one to your neighborhood. Um, even if you have an audiologist in your area, that doesn't mean that you can't bring out the mobile of um mobile van. Um, it's a great way to, to serve a lot of people for your community or partner with other clubs um, to bring it out. Um, the first thing that you would do is contact Melinda or, or myself and um, uh, Melinda here has been doing a lot of the coordination with Dr. Landsberg about the dates that he's available. He typically is saying like the first weekend, the first Saturday of each month, um, he can make that kind of a date 
um, for a range and, and time available. So we'd be able to do about one of these a month, um, maybe more depending on um, what kind of need ends up coming. Like I said, this is brand new, so we're growing it as we go. Um, so that's the first step. And then um, once you've contacted us for the available dates, the next thing um, they'll be doing is um, sometimes Dr. Landsberg works in the area, so he's already got a location. Otherwise, we'll be reaching out to the clubs that are interested, that are going to participate in that event to say, hey, do you have a great location that we can bring this mobile RV and park it where people will easily be able to find it? Um, and, you know, it's kind of nice if it has access to um, – restrooms and other yeah. things for for participants that it can be undercover if it does start to rain and it seems like he's worked really well with some different facility hotels and and yes. locations and they've been really grateful to work with him well, when we've called when we called the valley river inn which was kind of like can you do this for us and and actually the mall where it was originally going to just be parked out in the parking lot they're like oh you're serving low-income people for here i mean they're just they get really excited about being able to um, provide a space for the Lions. And so I think it's a neat way for them to get to know something else that Lions are doing in their community, mm -hmm. too. So it's it's a great for you, way for you to connect with some local businesses and, and promote yourselves as well. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about the, his RV is that um, he has a generator, so you don't need to have any electrical hookups. So you really can have the, the RV anywhere as long as it's central. Mm -hmm. And like Kara said, it's nice that there's some shelter and maybe restrooms nearby yeah. where people can wait. Excellent. And so then once we've got the location and the available dates, um, the next thing is for you, if you haven't already got a group of people waiting, it's for you to go out, um, gather the applicants that have lived in Oregon for two years or more, or Northern California, um, for two years or more, somewhere in MD36, and they have... Um, under 200% of the federal poverty um, guidelines, and those are the, the two basic and be able to pay the $25 requirements. And then um, is there is and I know I we get this okay. Go. okay. And so and then the um, and then then you'll have them run them through um, Melinda up here at the office, and she'll just you know sign off on them. And then once we've done that. Then the next thing that we're going to do is talk, then it would be um, your club agreeing for that $50 fee per person. Um, and that, like I said, that helps reimburse some of the costs of having that RV traveling around. And the other thing there is, so this is the one area where it's really different um, from what we piloted to now. Um, so one of the things that we've run into that Brenda kind of touched on earlier is our budget for our hearing program. So while we still have funds available for, while we still have funds available for our hearing program, they are getting down there. And so in order for us to make sure that we can have as much access as possible for the remainder of this year for people to be able to get these brand new aids, um, we are actually looking to the clubs and the participants to see if they can cover the costs of those aids. And they're only $125 a piece. I mean, I say only, it's easy for me to say. Um, but the, the cost of the aids compared to the two or 3000 that people would pay on a normal circumstance is it's, it's quite a good deal, and it does come with that year warranty. It comes with follow-up care and the professional fitting. Um, Dr. Landsberg is willing to come out and meet with the applicants for follow-up care as often as they need. Um, in those cases, he would ask for um, a $25 visit fee just because he would be coming out on a separate um, trip. Now, that don't be scared off by that $125 per aid for the participant because we do have some funds available. There's always going to be individuals that there is that hundred that's just out of reach. I mean, we all know we all serve those people where just them coming out and coming up with the copay. It may be something where the club is even covering the cost of the copay because this individual just doesn't have it. So there is some flexibility. Um, this is our general guideline for the program, and I know we have some clubs who have special funds where they're able to tap in, and they may be able to help the applicants with that. Melinda, did you I want to? I was also going to mention, um, you know, since I've been kind of working more closely with the hearing aid uh, pro program here, I've noticed that um, I, I speak to a lot of, um, of the uh, recipients, and a lot of times they say to me, you know, I do have some money available to spend on aids, just not 
thousands of dollars. Right. So a lot of the participants are uh, senior citizens. Um, so they're living on Social Security income. Um, they do, um, you know, uh, I know that they all have, uh, you know, Medicare. So it doesn't pay for the cost of the aid. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of them say that they do have some funding available that they can put towards. They can manage brand new aid. something like $125 yes. or their $25 copay, if yes. that's what it ends up being. But managing a few thousand yes. or more for the yes. aids is beyond unattainable. unattainable beyond. And I think that's what we want to try and focus on is that there are clientele out there. And we say clientele, but participants and people who are being qualified in here so that we're trying to get that set up. And I know that in this particular case, seeing that, I, I just, I think there's opportunity for us to have people covering different aspects of it. Um, and it is a new component to this part of our hearing program. So at this point, to make sure we're just kind of reiterating, contacting the foundation to talk about available dates. This is something that needs to be coordinated through multiple locations and you know groups and making sure that the aids are on hand because I know we used a lot of the aids that we did in a previous order and with the Starkey aids, we're purchasing them in a bulk, I guess mm -hmm. you would say, a bulk purchase. And then we get those materials here and then we send them out and work with Dr. Landsberg. So we need a little bit of time to do the, you know, the legwork and the mm -hmm. setup for it and arrangements. And then of course, qualifying the applicants and making sure that we have people who are going to go through the process of qualifying as well as showing up for the appointments and making sure to follow through with the care. Cause I'm sure that can be an issue as well. It can. And it's something that we hear from audiologists and from, um, clubs even too is like a little bit of concern that like are the people going to get good follow-up care mm -hmm. are they going to come back and take care of the aids and so this is not only a way of saying um you know here's something really first of all it's a great product i mean this is a really it's a brand new it's just an amazing product that the people will have access to and then the other piece of it is it's got such a great warranty and then with dr landsberg if they use the mobile event and the people come back, they can get as much follow-up care as they need to learn how to use it, to make sure it's working correctly and all of that. So there's just a lot of um, good things that come to this. But don't be scared off by this. If, you, if you're thinking this is something that you would really, really like to do, but you've got this person in mind that you want to help and you just know that this that's not going to work for them, let us know. I mean, just like with all of our programs, mm -hmm. we always want to work with you. And the biggest piece of this is we want to serve our communities. So how can we best serve our communities right now? This is this is because we're halfway through our year, just like you you are. We budget in the spring and then it's you know, it goes for a year. So right now we're kind of coming up with this this opportunity in the middle of our year. So it's not mm -hmm. quite fitted into our budget. Um, as, as well as it might in other years. There's a lot of things, which I'll talk about in a little bit, that we're going to be working on. And well, you mentioned budget there, and I wanted to say that you're right. So this is kind of an unbudgeted thing for us this year to kind of launch a pilot project and work with the Lions. But we know that the important thing and the value with Lions and what they find in serving their community with providing hearing aids is, you know, it's a crucial thing for us to provide. And then the other component is that we are doing our budgeting for our next fiscal year. And in order for us to have a good understanding of the demand from Lions Clubs and from their community as to what this can do, we need to figure out how we're going to direct those very limited general donations because, again, we do not have a dedicated funder for any of our hearing programs. And go ahead, Melinda. Well, and yeah. I was going to mention that um, our amazing uh, development director here, Nicole, she's been looking into several grants that might um, fit the bill for helping fund this. And so if anybody knows, if you any of you know any local funders, any um, um, anybody in your in your community that you know that that we might be able to apply to, that would be a really great opportunity for us to be able to bring some funds to your community for these particular events. So keep you your know, ears open for that. I'm really glad you said that because it reminded me that one of the things about this is that if you look at a person and you, so for the average for right now, average, we've done four, but for our mobile events, we see about 10 people. Um, so you figure for if 10 people go through your mobile event and they each get, say they each get two hearing aids. So that's going to be $2,500 for, for, for the, for the, for the aids for all of those people. If all 10 of those people each get two aids, it's $2,500. Now that can seem like a lot of money if you're looking at the individuals we're serving. But a lot of you may have a grocery outlet or a, um, 
even a bank or um, some other business that maybe you have a Lions Club member that works at a business where for that business, that's not much. And it's a donation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's this is a something that they're they could donate these funds. They're going to help 10 individuals. And I think for a lot of I can see that really being, and even as an individual, I can see for myself thinking I, I, that the whole amount would be out of range, but what a way to go to approach people and say, you know what, mm -hmm. if you could donate, you know, $125, yeah. you're going to buy a brand new hearing aid for someone right here in your community for this event. Um, but finding those new ways to partner yeah. and, and new things to do. And we know now that there are many um, local businesses and banks that actually have set aside community funds to be used for this type of service. And it may just be a matter of contacting some of the, the local area businesses. And maybe you even park the mobile RV parks then in their yeah. parking and lot. They would be a sponsor for the event. So we could even have like a banner of there or something that, that would say this is sponsored by mm -hmm. so and so, so and so. Absolutely. It's so a you, local PR. Yeah. So yeah. if you have any questions about that and you want to kind of um, you want our help in kind of making that sponsorship happen please let me know and or Kareth and then we can talk to Nicole and we can reach out to the potential sponsor and kind of help um, bridge that because that would be a really great way to have an event. We've been working on developing our relationships with the different local media contacts around the state and we've had some great success especially around our mobile health screening program in getting media and local coverage and I think we do have some interested parties around what we can do with hearing. I really would like to see some of the local businesses get involved and I, I you know I know it's it's never easy to go and ask for people, but if we don't ask, we're not going to find anything, and nobody has an opportunity to say yes, they can help. Um, I know this time holiday season, people are being very generous, and you know this is a good time to say your local Lions Club is serving people on a you know critical and local level, and it, it makes a real big difference. For and them. the other thing to keep in mind, um, the other thing to keep in mind is that for the um, for the average club, even if I use the clubs up here in Portland, I know that they are paying um, 100 to 125 dollars per person, and that's just in Portland. Um, I know the farther out from Portland you get, the more expensive it gets. So for some clubs, maybe um, that 50 dollars per person that we're charging is a huge saving. So maybe that allows you then to help that participant with their fee, and you still come out the same as you would have before. So it's just a there's a lot of different ways that we could come up with the amounts here that um, so like I said don't don't let it don't let the initial view of that um, frighten you um, the, and we can talk it through with you and figure out what we can do and one of our goals is to have kind of a pool available just like we do with some of our other programs where when you come across a club or a person who just this is just out of reach we'll find a way to make it happen and uh, the main thing for us to keep in mind is that this is our pilot project for this. This is us figuring out what is going to work in the it. and exactly. testing it. You know, figuring out what works for the different clubs, the different areas and locations and, and you know the different partners. And I wanted to say we have a question. Um, one of our attendees is asking if people in the metro Portland metro area could utilize Gateway Hearing, who's one of our, I know Melinda, you adore um, our partner Gateway Hearing who has helped a lot of the local Portland clubs. They're really, really crucial. They're great with um, their clients and, and the services. They're wondering if we could use some Starkey aids through Gateway. So if we were, I would love to answer that question. The answer is y yes. Um, yeah, if you want to go ahead and, and go on to the next slide. Oh, okay. Roar for Individuals um, pilot program. So one of the things that is coming in, in 2016, which is in, January just a couple weeks from now is is um, is <laughs> this is not launching a couple is, weeks from now down 2016 no. is on 2016 the way. is on the way and one of the things that we want to do is allow clubs to access these new aids with their local audiologists um, so in addition to being able to bring keep in mind that even if you're in the Portland area you can bring out the Roar mobile you can have it come out to Gresham or Troutdale or Lloyd Center wherever you want and, and access the the mobile vehicle that way um, but if you you can also do it with your local our hope is to have it match up so that yes gateway hearing can use this whatever hearing um, services your club is working your audiologist 
for the most part, will it be able to work with you. We're actually testing it right now out in the Bend Sunrise Club area. Um, Redmond, um, there's four or five, there's the Madras, Lapine. There's several clubs out in that area where their audiologist that they're using really um, prefers not to work with the refurbished aids. So it's been kind of a struggle out there, but they're very excited about, you know what, if we can have access to these new aids, I think we could make this work. And so we're keeping that partnership with the clubs going by testing these, how this new Starkey um, aid and access will work. In order to do um, the individual um, individual ROAR, um, what you would need is an audiologist that your club works with that has access to Starkey software. Um, most of them do work with it. It's Starkey just it's such is, a um, national, large provider. Um, and Heather has been great. She's kind of our contact person. She has local um, people that if we say, hey, we've got this audiologist, you know, Joe, Joe from um, Gresham is really interested in, in using these aids. She will actually have someone come out and, and contact them, make sure that they've got all the software and the other pieces that they would need, and just make sure that they know exactly what they're doing so that we can make it work. Um, there is a new ROAR application that has the Starkey aid information on it um, because it's a different, basically since we send the aid from the foundation office instead of from all going through RJS, so we've added some language onto the application that includes what the audiologist would do to order those Starkey aids. Um, and the, um, the other thing right now, and again, this is because of just where piloting this out in the middle of our budget year, right now we would have to ask that the applicants be able to cover that cost of those aids as well. Um, because this is a test and we're having to order in bulk to, to get it out there. Um, so the first thing you need to do is arrange to test the program with Melinda or Kareth. And I have my name on there, but really it's Melinda. She's, she's, <laughs> she knows what's out there. So, Melinda, they should contact you if they have questions Absolutely. about either for the mobile vehicle with Dr. Landsberg or with what we're trying to do with these individuals. Yeah, I would love to help with any questions you have for any aspect of the hearing aid program, so the ROAR program. And she can kind of give you a more one-on-one -on -one view of, like, here's what it's going to, because we've, we've talked to a couple of audiologists already, so she can give you an idea of what that looked like and, and what that is. So that's the first step. And then once you've done that, then we set up that audiologist partnership um, with Starkey. <laughs> and yeah, I, I had some fun with the PowerPoint when I put in all these little transitions and some of them, <laughs> the timing was really funny. Um, anyway, so then she'll, Melinda will work with you to help set up that audiology partnership. We'll connect them with Starkey, make sure that they've got everything that they need to make it work. And then once that's all set up, da 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 then um, you'll process that qualified applicant just like you do right now, except with the new Starkey um, portion on there. Mm -hmm. um, they'll come through us, they'll get verified, and then um, the audiologist will see the client and do the hearing test, and then they'll order the aid or aids through the foundation office, um, and we've got um, carrying containers and stuff that we'll ship it out to them so that it goes back for the individual. And then, um, then the then the individual um, will get billed for the cost of the aids. And the we probably will hold off on not because most of the people, but because I think you've all had issues. You all know what it's like to try to collect funds and, and deal with all of that. So the one thing that you should know is before the individual can go pick up their hearing aids, they will need to pay either they or your club or whoever is paying that, that cost of the aid, that will need to be in place before the aids are actually distributed. Okay. Just to make sure, and it's, you know, it's that way we, we know all the costs got covered and they're just, they're done with that and then they can move forward. Um, and we're not struggling to collect after the fact. So then that actually answers the question that was asked if they're going to be able to use Gateway Hearing. It sounds like if Gateway Hearing, which entirely likely that they have Starkey software. No, and my understanding actually, Doug had gone out to visit with them just to um, get a look at what they do for us because they are just huge in the in the Portland area, um, in the not just Portland but Multnomah County, Clackamas County. There's just a lot of area that that one hearing provider serves, and they did sound interested and like that would be something that they could do. Mm -hmm. um, 
my only hesitancy at this part is because it is new for us. So we're trying to go in slowly. So we don't want suddenly to have 100 people um, needing the new Starkey aids. For one thing, we don't have physically that many on hand. Um, and so and that'll be something we can, you know, as we individually are chatting with you and stuff that we can set up and figure out. So for right now, it really will have to be a combination that continues to use our other refurbished program as well. And then what we're, um, I think we'll talk about on the on the, the next slide a little bit is where we're going. And then what I wanted to just bring up right there was um, when we talk about the Starkey aids, because we are purchasing those ahead of time, but we're not not be collecting from either the participants or individuals or clubs until a little bit later in the process to, yeah, to, to, in order to place that order to make sure that we have the funding for it. So one of the things that I would like to know from you lions out there and you participants in sight and hearing chairs and those of you that are volunteering in your local community is how much interest and demand we have for this. So we would like to build it. We would like to put this together. We would love to have these new aids be available as widely as possible throughout the multiple district down into Northern California everywhere that we can with the um, throughout the multiple district but I really um, in order to account for next year in order to make sure that we're budgeting properly and we know I, I we need to know how much interest you guys have in this so please don't hesitate to express your interest even if you're not ready with your own funding or ready with the clientele or otherwise let us know contact Melinda um, she can be reached by phone or by email or you know, instant message or text or whatever you've got there um, in order to express your interest and say that, you know, I'd love to do something in my community. I don't know what yet, but um, the interest is there. And that would really be helpful for us. And the other thing, um, I, I was, as she was talking, this is a pilot program. One of the other, um, once paid, we ship the aids to the audiologist. So then they have them and they can fit the client and, and get going from there. They'll get fitted with the brand new Starkey aids and, um, and then they'll get follow up care as they need. The um, one thing um, I was just thinking about was um, keeping in mind for you as you, um, for some of the smaller clubs, we may not have to be creative. We may need to get, um, like, you know, if we had, if, if you figure that for us to order a set of aids, um, it's really 10 people, you know, maybe 12 to 14 people. Um, if there's 14 people that are interested in receiving the new aids, that is enough. I mean, that's the funding for us to order a set of aids. Absolutely. So 14 people, I know some of the clubs um, do a lot of volume. So it may be something where... Um, creatively, one of the things I'm thinking about is instead of um, sending one person through at a time, maybe you wait to like the Gresham supper and Gresham breakfast. Maybe they they each wait till they each have five people or or six people ready to go, and then they we send them all through at once to order the aids, come in. They all go to the audiologist with those new aids. So there's there's ways we can work through this. So just call us up. We'll brainstorm. We'll figure out what we can do. We'll partner you up with your other um, sight and hearing chairs in your neighborhood. And we, we find ways to make this kind of thing happen. Um, this picture right here is of... I'm going to jump in real quick. We did get um, a question or a confirmation that we're looking for from Helen. Um, she does work with Gateway, and they've worked with them, and she's... You know, indicating here that happy to decide whether a new or refurbished aid is appropriate for which clientele coming in and what she's wanting to confirm because either way, whether it's a refurbished mm -hmm. or a um, new aid through Starkey, it sounds like the cost will be the same if it's through Gateway at this particular point. As far as because Gateway the, has agreed to that $125 refurbished rate for their I believe so um, for we, their exam and fitting. We, yes, yeah. right now the the current cost that the my understanding, if you go to your indiv individual audiologist, would be that whatever they're charging now wouldn't need to be any more or less. And in fact, some ways it's probably easier for them to work with a newer aid than a refurbished. But it's going to probably depend. Um, and just so all of you know, one thing that we have heard a lot of feedback off and on this year um, from clubs and just from different audiologists occasionally mentioning, I guess a lot of costs have been going up. And I don't know about mm -hmm. you, but I know I've been... Um, gosh, going back 10, 15 years doing sight and hearing through my club and through other things, and I know that the cost has not changed. And so I would not be surprised that at some point in the next year or two, there may be, and I'm not thinking it's going to be a huge jump, but I do think that we'll start seeing a little bit of a mm -hmm. climb up. But for now, whatever arrangement you have with them, it should be the same 
whether or not you're looking at new or yeah, refurbished. We've, we've been hearing from audiologists uh, that things like ear molds, um, other materials like that have kind of bumped up in the last um, six months or so. So I, de I definitely think we're going to see an increase in in what audiologists are going to charge the clubs. So. And I know as technology grows, we all know that that technology changes as we go along and people may not think about hearing aids that way, but it really is a small computer mm -hmm. that is in there processing the sound and putting a digital you know, twist on what's happening there. One of the other, um, we've got, just to let you guys know, because you can't see my other screen on here, we've got some attendees who are expressing highly interested oh, very very interested so i'm very excited to see that thank you so much for that interest and for helen if that's if that's our lloyd center helen um one of the things to keep in mind too for like i said before um for even if you're in an area that you do have an audiologist if you're in portland or you're in um somewhere else where you know and not that not that um you, you know that we want to in any way mm -hmm. change the partnership with a local provider but um, especially with gateway where I know they're seeing so many it's 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 still an option if it works if if the way to make it work is to have that mobile unit come up um, you know whatever we need to do you know so there's different there's different ways out there that we can that we'll figure out mm -hmm. how to make this work this this picture on this last slide here is a very nice lady named Emmy who received hearing aid she's obviously very excited about um, what she's you know what's happening and being able to hear and that was the that's Alliance. yeah she's okay yeah yeah and so and then um, for moving forward you know in in this um, starting this new year and then going into our um, our new lion year, which you all know, we all, all the clubs and our foundation, we all do our budgeting in the spring. So there's several things we're looking into. Um, Melinda had mentioned that Nick is really looking into grants for program support. Um, we would love to hear from you from your local areas like, and, and, and let's start working now because, you know, maybe it takes us a few months to get that event out to your area, but we'll, we'll we can find something, make something happen. Um, we've got a volunteer right now that's very interested in helping with some local promotional type things. And so we may be able to tap into that resource as well. Yeah. Um, we've got, um, we're hoping to do more events, um, more community access. Um, as this program grows, every time um, Dr. Todd comes out and does an event, um, we tweak things, we figure out what worked, what didn't work, um, and it gets, it's going to get easier, it's going to get stronger. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to do it more frequently and get some scheduling going. Um, because the opportunity to make partnerships with either the audiologist you're already working with or maybe even some new ones. Um, maybe you've had an audiologist that you're not working with anymore because they really, the refurbished aid was just a challenge for them. Maybe this is an opportunity for your community get to get an audiologist back on board because now they can work with the, they can have the Starkey option mm -hmm. to where maybe that's easier for them and they're more willing to serve you with a low cost fitting and, and test because they can access that that aid. Yeah, in that circumstance, or, or maybe there's a, um, an audiologist in your area that you haven't reached out to yet, if you have any, um, if you have any desire to do so, go ahead and contact me and I have, paper, I have different flyers with information about the program. I have that spec sheet on those Aries hearing aids that you saw earlier in an earlier slide. Um, I have several different um, uh, uh, flyers that I can give to you to give to the audiologist and help you kind of make that connection and, and give you all the, the information and the, and the uh, tools necessary to make that connection. And Heather at Starkey, uh, one of the things that she told me, um, not only are they willing to connect with an audiologist that we do want to work with, but she's also, from time to time, she gets individuals that contact her that are looking for ways to serve their community. So if we have a particular neighborhood or area where maybe there isn't somebody that you're able to work with or your, your individuals are traveling pretty far, um, it's worth us reaching out to her to see, is there someone in that area that you think would work with the Lions Clubs and be able to, to work in this program? And um, Dr. Lance although he typically travels along the south coast and up through Eugene we spoke to him about you know is it possible would you be able to travel all the way out to let you know uh, you know yeah. out to the east yeah would you can you go to Pendleton can you go to um, northern California you know where where all can you go and he's pretty open to traveling anywhere mm -hmm. that we need him to travel start wrapping up and so the only other thing I wanted to say is that um, just like we do with our, our, sorry, that's confusing, our other programs and things that we're doing, um, that we're always looking for new fundraising sources, new ways to make the, you know, things we can shift, ways we can support the program more. So, you know, at, 
part of our pilot for this program is piloting the budget for it and figuring out like how do we add more access to this into the budget so that maybe we can offset those costs for the individuals or or find a way where it's a mix maybe the individual pays half and or they you know it's buy one we pay for one they pay for one you know there's all kinds of ways that maybe um hey that might even work for your club but anyway i'm glad you were here to hear the roar i'm very excited about this program i've been joking about a mobile ear van for years so it's it's kind of exciting and it's a dream um, come true it's really exciting to reach some of those areas that haven't had the, you know, haven't haven't been able to to get as much audiology service. So I know for us here in the office and and for all of you listening out there, because I'm looking at the messages and um, coming across and everybody's saying thank you. They're very interested. This is a you know a great thing. And I know for us it's been um, quite a long time coming to emphasize the hearing side of our programs. It's not the easiest one to get out there because it does take a lot of coordination. It does take a lot of different and you know even just more resources to try and get some of the service out there. But it's definitely impactful. It definitely makes a, a difference in every one of their lives. So I know during this holiday season, this is our opportunity to give these particular gifts. We get to do this all year, every year, and um, pretty amazing. But I want to say thank you to all our attendees. Thank you, Kareth. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you. Anything else that we want to? All right. We're going to go ahead and close everything. Thank you, everybody, for attending. We'll send out promotions for our future webinars. And I think I managed to get a good recording of this particular one. Um, I'm not sure what other hiccups we've got in there, but I'll do a little editing and go ahead and see if we can get this posted so that if you want to share this, listen to it again, go back over certain parts of it, um, you're welcome to do that. I'm really grateful for all of you. I, I'm you know, happy to be here and we can do this for you. And thank you so much and yeah. have a great one. Thank you. I love working with you all. So thank you for participating. Merry Christmas and happy holidays, everyone.